Welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sarah. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me today. I have tons of spring and summer inspiration for you guys today. I believe I have 36 DIYs for you guys today. So a bunch of these are old DIYs. It's just a huge compilation of videos that I have done in the past up until recently. So you will see a few clips of Brie when she was really little. Um, but anyway, let's just jump right in for the first one I have these milk bottles from Dollar Tree and I'm just painting them with the ivory Waverly chalk paint I like to use a brush because I feel like it get gives fuller coverage like to get in all of those cracks and everything and I really like that technique for Painting the jars. Otherwise you could do a spray paint if you want to um, and then I'm just taking a wet paper towel. This is my first time ever doing a wet distressing on these jars and I really liked how it turned out. It was super chippy and I really like that better than having like sandpaper marks and lines on it. Um, you can definitely go the sandpa sandpaper route as well. I do that all the time. Um, but this was just a new fun thing to try and I really liked the outcome of it. I just had this huge ball of twine and I decided to use that to hang my jars from a little frame type thing that I had made in a different video um, but I just went ahead and wrapped it around the edges and left some sticking out the side so I could use that to make a little tie at the top So this frame type thing I made a long time ago, but I just like stapled and nailed it together. Some two by fours, are those two by fours? Anyway, I painted and distressed them. Then I just stapled some chicken wire to the back. I drilled some holes in the top and poked my strings through the top. And then I just tied a knot and I tried to make them all about the same length. They didn't come out perfectly even, but that's okay with me because it adds to the rustic look, I think. Um, but that's all I did for this one. I think it turned out super, super pretty. This is still one of my favorite DIYs I've ever done, and this was from a really long time ago, maybe like two years ago. It was near the very beginning of my channel. Anyway, really, really love this one, and maybe one day I'll make something similar to this again as I sold this one when we lived in our smaller house and I had nowhere to put it. <laughs> but anyway, yes, one of my very favorite ones ever. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and tons more. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, it's the perfect learning environment with no ads to break your focus and they are always launching new premium classes to help you learn new skills and stay creative. Some classes I would suggest to crafters like myself would be hand lettering, drawing, and painting. I really want to get into some of those classes, but lately I'm still enjoying Thomas Frank's class on productivity for creatives. 
I never wanted to commit to an uploading schedule before because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to stick to it, but by implementing his strategy on harnessing creativity on a schedule, I've been able to create and stick with a plan that actually works and is less stressful, so I highly recommend his class. Members get unlimited access to thousands of classes with video lessons, hands-on projects, and feedback from a community of millions. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity too. With that being said, let's just jump right back into the DIYs. So for this next DIY, my sister-in-law actually gave me this plaque. I think it may have been from Michael's because she really loves Michael's, but I'm really not sure where it came from. You can find pieces like this at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, anywhere like that. Um, or you could even use a Dollar Tree sign. But anyway, I wanted to add a little spring wreath to this piece of wood. So I decided to use some of the nautical rope from Dollar Tree. And a long time ago, I saw Megan from Glue Guns and Roses use some wire on a piece of rope um, and just wrap it all the way around till you have the whole length of your desired length. <laughs> that way you can shape it however you want it to look. So you could even make like a heart wreath or something like that, but you just shape it and then you can add your florals or whatever you want to. So... Once I had my wire wrapped all the way around, and I believe I got this wire from like Hobby Lobby or somewhere, you could use floral wire, anything like that. This is just what I had on hand. I think it's for jewelry or something. I'm really not sure. Um, but I actually just twisted it onto the other side. I didn't even have to add any glue, I don't think. Um, but yeah, so once I just had it in a circle the way I wanted it, I added a bunch of lavender from Walmart and I think it turned out beautiful. I just hot glued it down in a circle and this is still one of my favorite DIYs I've ever done. So, so simple, um, but just so beautiful. Sometimes the easiest ones to do turn out the prettiest. So next I'm just doing this wreath that went on our front door. I had this huge grapevine uh, wreath form from Hobby Lobby. I think I got it on sale years ago and I just wrapped some burlap ribbon around it and then started adding on different pieces and what I would do is just rip this apart for the different seasons and make a new one because it's always fun to make a new wreath anyway so I just saved this huge one for our front door now I sold it when we were moving um when it was in like a fall uh theme but anyway so I might have to get myself another big one like this because I really loved redoing this one for every season but I just added some huge magnolia flowers from Walmart um, they're super inexpensive and really, really pretty for spring, in my opinion. And I just added some lavender from Walmart as well. It's just $2 per bunch, and there's plenty on the pick. I did have a huge burlap ribbon that I had in the middle already. 
but I just made that from some Walmart burlap and I added a little cross in the middle that I had had for a really long time that I got from my aunt. It was made out of cactus wood, I think. Um, but anyway, super, super easy to do and I think it turned out really pretty. Um, but like I said, I just love to change these up throughout the year and for the different seasons. And it's really easy to do if you just add a little bit of hot glue. It's very easy to just rip it all back off and start over. But I really like how this one turned out for spring. This next DIY is using a canvas from Dollar Tree. I just take my X-Acto knife and go around the edges of the canvas and cut that right off. If you want to, you can go ahead and pull out all the staple, staples and extra stuff there, uh, but you definitely don't have to if you, you know, if nobody's going to see the back. I didn't worry about the staples. I just pulled off the part that anybody would be able to see from the front and then I always do save those canvases so that I can use them later on other projects but I just went ahead and painted this frame with my ivory chalk paint from Walmart and the brand Waverly Next, I had some scrap chicken wire and I just went ahead and stapled that on with my little um, handgun stapler thingy and it's super easy to use. I highly suggest getting one of those if you use, um, just really if you craft much at all. They're super, super convenient and I really enjoy using that instead of trying to glue this chicken wire on there. It would be so difficult since it's real chicken wire. But anyway, I have these little whimsical uh, pretty flowers from Hobby Lobby. I've been using these for a long time. It comes with so many on a bunch and I just get them when they're half off at Hobby Lobby and they're super affordable for how much you get. So these, I think they also have other colors even of these, like maybe a light pink or something, but I really like these white ones for spring. I just went ahead and cut off as many as I wanted and kept it super um, light and airy and I just took some twine and wrapped it around so it would look like a little wild bouquet that maybe you picked from outside in a field. <laughs> And I just wanted it to be kind of wild and whimsical. And so I just went ahead and um, tied those together with some twine and then hot glued it all down. Because I was gluing it onto the chicken wire, I did have to add a lot of hot glue just to make sure that it would stay. Um, but I just put a little bit on the back of my flowers and then flipped the whole entire thing over and hot glued from the back some little pieces onto the chicken wire so that the whole thing would stick very well. And I think this one turned out really, really pretty. I think it would be super cute if you did maybe like three of them in a row. You could put them um, in a window or on a shelf or something like that. But I think that would be a cute idea as well.
next using another one of those canvases from Dollar Tree. We're just doing a reverse canvas on this one. So I did the same thing where I removed the canvas from the back and then I actually stacked two on top of each other. So this is from two canvases. I did use hot glue, but I would suggest using wood glue or something like that because it does add uh, like thickness between the wood and it also doesn't hold very well. <laughs> So next I just used some black and brown paint mixed with some water to make a light stain and I really like the look of this. It makes it look super rustic but I just painted that all over it and then you can wipe it off with a paper towel if you don't like the smell of stain or the greasy residue or you want it to dry faster. Basically there's just a ton of upsides to doing your staining this way. Um, so that's what I did on this one. It's super simple, quick and easy. And then I went ahead and added the canvas back to my frame. So I just cut off the edges that were going to be overlapping and then hot glued it right down. And this way you have um, just a more of a rustic look. Now before I glued it back down, I did add some distress ink. You guys know that I love to use that if you've been around for very long, um, but it's really great for fabric and things like that. You can always do um, some tea or coffee staining, but this is so simple and so quick to use if you're, you know, in a pinch or I just really like the way that it looks. And if your desk is messy like mine was with like bumps of hot glue and random paint and stuff, you'll get those darker areas randomly throughout your um, piece if you leave it laying flat. Anyway, I made these burlap roses uh, like a long time ago for a different project, but I just ripped them off of it because I didn't like it anymore and I decided to add them to this one so I just hot glued those down if you want to see how to make those I think I do have a fabric flowers video that I can link in the description or you can just search for it on YouTube um, there's plenty of tutorials out there that you can follow but I just decided to add some twine to make it look like stems and then I hot glued everything down added a twine bow and I think this one came out really really pretty to the next project I had a bunch of scrap wood that my dad gave me he used to do trimming and so he had a bunch of this on hand that they would just throw away at his job site so he would save it for me um, but if you don't have a bunch of scrap wood like this you could use uh, paint stirring sticks and like glue or staple them together uh, you could just get small skinny pieces of wood from like Home Depot or Lowe's they're really, really cheap, like a dollar or two for like 15 feet for these skinny, small, rustic pieces. So super inexpensive, and I think the look is much nicer than using something from Dollar Tree, like rulers or something. But anyway, I just used wood glue and then my little nail gun. Um, it's a staple and nail gun. Um, and so I think I just used little nails on this one, but I just did that for the back and then turned it over so you wouldn't see those. Um, I guess I did paint this too, but you saw that. Anyway, I just used a bunch of random um, spring um, wild looking flowers from Hobby Lobby. And uh, this was a few years ago too, so I don't know if they have these exact same ones. I know they have some of them. Um, but anyway, you could just choose any that you like. And I just hot glued them all over this to make it look like a beautiful trellis. And it was super simple, um, but I think it's still one of the prettiest DIYs I've ever done.
for my next DIY, I have the sign from Dollar Tree. Um, these were really popular a few years ago, and that's when I made this DIY. And I'm not sure if they still have these specific signs. I haven't seen them in a while, but I don't go to Dollar Tree often these days because I just have way too many supplies that I really need to use, and it would just be wasteful for me to go all the time. I just picked out a piece of scrapbook paper that I really liked and felt like spring to me and I just cut around the edges with an X-Acto knife. Some, some parts it wasn't going through all the way so I just used my scissors uh, but it was super easy to cut out around this little sign and then for the middle part I cut out that piece because I decided to paint that instead. Just use Mod Podge to adhere the scrapbook paper. You could even use glue stick, um, but I always have a ton of Mod Podge on hand, so that's what I used here. Um, and I just went ahead and covered the whole entire sign and then put my scrapbook paper down. Next, I decided to paint that little piece in the middle with some plaster Waverly chalk paint, and I think I did a few coats to cover up the bright colors. I'm using one of my favorite stencils from Walmart and writing fresh flower market with a Posca paint pen and then I just filled it in with the pen as well. These are my favorite paint pens. I've tried a few different brands and these are still my absolute favorite. I like that they are matte and not shiny and they also come in different um, size tips. So you can get the fine point or the medium or fat I think obviously it's not called that I don't know but there's I think there's two or three different ones um, but I really like all of them and they come in a bunch of different colors they are a little bit pricey but I think that's you know to be expected for good quality and I will have them linked below if you want to check them out because um, you guys are always asking me uh, what paint pens I use so I will go ahead and link that in the description I just get them on Amazon but then I just wrote open and closed on either side of the middle piece on the sign. I distressed the edges of the scrapbook paper a little bit with some sandpaper. And then I decided to add on some fabric flowers that I made from a previous project. Honestly, I could take it or leave it with those. Um, it wasn't my favorite how the fabric flowers turned out on here, but I still like the idea of it. Um, and I think the whole sign in general just came out really cute.
Sex DIY is still my most viewed video on YouTube, I believe, but I just was trying or I took inspiration, I guess, from the Hobby Lobby sign that I just showed. And I have had these uh, boxes from Dollar Tree and I just went ahead and popped out the backs. So it's super easy to do. Um, and I have three of them. They were already black on the frame and I really liked how it looked so I didn't paint that at all but I did go ahead and remove the stickers and the middle part of the sign and paint it over that I tried to take off the paper first but that didn't work very well for me I've seen other people sometimes it just peels right off um, but I was able to take off my stickers and you can use a hair dryer or any other kind of heat to get these off easily um, but I didn't know about that back then <laughs> So luckily I was able to get these off without too much trouble. I did go ahead and sand these down because of the little marks in the middle and just any residue that was left from the stickers. And then I painted them with some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I did that for all three of the inserts of these little plaques. brown apple barrel paint and an old brush and I'm just dry brushing this onto there so I basically just got a little bit on my brush and then I dab it off onto the paper towel until it's mostly dry you can do that on anything um, but the paper towel seems to work really well and absorbs the paint so you don't get too much on there and mess it up if you do you can just go ahead and sand over top of it um, so that it's not too harsh of lines but I just went over all three of them and distressed them a little bit Next I'm going in again with my stencil from Walmart and my Posca paint pens and I just wrote farm fresh eggs on my little signs. I did go ahead and put farm a little bit to the right. I don't remember if I did that on purpose or not but it worked out perfectly because I added an egg to the side so it was a little offset so that made everything fit just perfectly. But a little tip with stenciling if you're trying to make it nice and centered try to put your middle letters on first and then go outwards so that you have uh, your word is kind of centered I don't know if that makes sense sometimes it doesn't always work very well because the letters are not the exact same size so for instance an I is much skinnier than an M and so it's not always going to be foolproof but it does help quite a bit.
Next, I'm stapling together my frames with my hand stapler from Walmart. This I would not suggest this one if you have arthritis or something like that because you do have to push really hard and some of you have asked me about that before. So I would say no if you have arthritis or something like that but they do have electric ones that you can get to where you're not going to have to push very hard. So I would just look into that if that's an issue for you. And then on the front I didn't want to add those staples. You definitely could. It would just be a more of a rustic look but I just added a little bit of glue in there later. Um, and then I had this scrap piece of chicken wire which I also just stapled down. After I got everything stapled down, I just put my little signs exactly where I wanted them and then I folded over the chicken wire to help it stay in place. Now, if it were just me, I could easily leave the back like that if I was going to put it up on a high shelf or something, but if you're worried about getting poked by the chicken wire on the back, you can definitely cover it. I ended up selling this to a friend and I went ahead and covered the whole back with some adhesive felt from Arteza and that worked really well because it was already sticky and then it covered up those sharp pokey edges but you could also just cover them with hot glue or something like that so that they're not going to be poking and scraping anyone. So I did go ahead and add that hot glue to the tips so that they wouldn't be sharp but then like I said later I did add the felt to the back which also would just give it more of a finished look. Next, I'm just taking some dark colored raffia and adding a little bit to each box to make it look a little more rustic and a little more like um, a little chicken coop. taking a Dollar Tree Easter egg and gluing that into the corner. I did cut up the raffia a little bit just so it would look a little more natural and not all folded in weird spots. I just added some hot glue between the frames to hold them together and that was all I did for this one. I would suggest using some wood glue if you wanted a really strong hold but I just use hot glue for video purposes. Wood glue would be more ideal for this type of material.
still one of my favorite DIYs ever. I absolutely love how rustic this one is. It's just totally my vibe and I absolutely love it. So moving on to the next DIY, I had this piece of scrapbook paper that looks like seed packets and this was given to me by my sister-in-law also and I think she got it from Michael's but I just went ahead and cut them apart and picked out the few that I wanted to use on my sign. So here I'm just using a Dollar Tree sign that I had on hand. I went ahead and removed the sticker from the back. Like I said, use heat. It's much easier. Um, but then I just went ahead and painted over the whole entire thing with a green color. I don't remember the exact color. I'm sure I will show it. Oh my goodness, look at me struggling. If only you knew. <laughs> So next I just mixed the color plaster from Waverly and Spanish Moss from Folk Art uh, chalk paint and I just went ahead and covered the whole entire sign with that paint. Next I'm just using a white Posca paint pen with a few different stencils that I had on hand. One is from Walmart and the bigger one is from Michaels like years ago so I'm not sure if they still have it but I just wrote Seed Co guaranteed quality and then I just filled the small letters in with my Posca paint pen and then the bigger letters I just fill in with a small paintbrush. but I took this outside and used my electric sander on it to distress it a whole bunch. You could do this or not depending on your style and then I just went ahead and took my distress ink and did the edges of the paper to make them look a little bit more weathered and old and then I just mod podge them on there and covered the whole entire sign so it would have the same finish all over.
Next, I just used some truffle chalk paint to go ahead and distress the paper a little bit more because apparently I was not satisfied with the look and um, I just dry brushed a little bit of that on there. insane amount of Mod Podge to attach these to my sign and then I went ahead and covered the whole entire thing like I said so that the whole thing would have the same finish. Because I turned this sign to the side, it had those holes at the side where the sign was originally hanging. You could fill those with wood filler before you paint it, but I thought it would be cute to add some twine in and make a bow on the side, so that's exactly what I did, and I really love how this one came out. It's really unique. I haven't seen anything like it before or since, and I really, really like the way that it turned out. Another one of my favorites coming up. Who am I kidding? They're all my favorite. <laughs> You'll have to let me know down in the comments which one you like the best if you have a favorite from this video. But anyway, I'm just starting out with these little round things from Dollar Tree. I found these probably last year for spring. And I went ahead and removed, look at me getting smart. I removed the stickers with my hair dryer. Um, just add a little bit of heat and they peel right off. Look at that. Ugh. If you had only known, you could have saved yourself so much struggling. Anyway, just went ahead and removed all of those stickers. Next, I'm taking my Truffle Waverly chalk paint and just painting the edges of the circles. No need to worry about the top because we're going to add some paper to it. You can go ahead and paint the back if you want a finished look. I usually don't care because I am in a hurry. I don't usually have a lot of time when I'm crafting because I always need to get back to Brie. Um, so I don't really care how the back looks because nobody's going to see it. So anyway, I just went ahead and printed these three printables that I found on Pinterest for some different kinds of herbs. And I did it on some old looking paper and I don't remember exactly where I got this paper. Someone gave it to me, I think, but I'm sure you could find something like this easily online or at Hobby Lobby or something, but I just went ahead and cut out the circles because apparently I did not know how to get the printable in the right part of my paper, so it was not going to cover the whole entire round piece, so I decided to cover them first, and then I went ahead and tore around the edges of my little principles. These are just herbs, I believe, and I really like the way that that turned out. Sometimes a mistake or like the way you didn't plan it, it just turns out better than the way that you originally kind of dreamt up the idea in your head. 
So I just went ahead and tore it all around the edges and then I glued everything down with some glue stick. Oh, but first I smushed them all up <laughs> so that they would look super wrinkly and old. Oh, not glue stick, guys. It's really hard doing voiceovers for old videos. I don't know what's coming up. I don't know what I did a year ago. Anyway, you can see what I did here. I used some spray adhesive, but you could use glue stick or whatever works for you. Um, but I just went ahead and put those right down on top of the round piece. And then I did use some distress ink to go over it. And all of those wrinkly parts made the distress part look awesome. Oh, I didn't use distress ink. Look at that. I'm using some truffle chalk paint. Fire me right now. I'm failing. I will also try to link these free printables down in the description for you if they're still available. Next I have this gold basket from Dollar Tree and I went ahead and used that same um, truffle chalk paint to make it look old and rusty. I just, instead of swiping the paint on, I just got a tiny bit on my brush and then I just stippled the paint on which basically means you're just bouncing your brush up and down so you don't get those brush strokes, instead it's just kind of like randomly spotty on there like rust would be. And I really, really like the look of this. I just think it looks so realistic and actually rusty. And I just love, 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 love. <laughs> I just love, love, love the way this thing turned out. Next I just used some twine to tie these into my basket. They didn't fit straight across which is what I was originally planning to do. Um, and then I panicked and I was like, babe, what do I do? Like they don't fit and I did all of this work already and he's like, why can't you stagger them like you have them in there now? And I was like, oh my goodness, that's such a good idea. Anyway, like I said, when you mess up, sometimes it's for the better because it comes out cuter than what you had planned or expected. And this one definitely did. I absolutely love how it came out. Okay, so this next DIY, um, clearly I lost some footage, but it was just one of these glass frame thingies from Dollar Tree. The frame is actually plastic and the glass does not come out and it had words written on it. And so I just went ahead and used some nail polish remover and scrubbed those off. And then I painted the frame. Looks like maybe I used plaster or ivory chalk paint. Next, I'm just taking some jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart and cutting them down until I have the correct size that I need to cover the entire thing.
Next, I'm just making a quick stain with some black and gray paint mixed with water. I just rub that all over my popsicle sticks and then dry them off with a paper towel. Super quick and easy, like I said in the previous DIY. It doesn't stink and it's not greasy on your hands either. It also dries much more quickly than a regular stain would. Next, I just use hot glue to adhere these to the glass, but as we all know, if you are an experienced crafter, at least you know that hot glue does not stick to glass worth anything, so these were popping right off. So I would suggest doing some other kind of glue that you know would work, uh, maybe E6000 or wood glue might even work, I'm not really sure, but use something that you know works with glass. Anyway, still a cute idea, I think. I would just use a different kind of glue. Once I had the whole thing covered, I went ahead and took some spring florals that I had from Hobby Lobby on hand. Just glued those down with some hot glue until I liked the pattern and the look that I had going. And that's all I did for this one. I think it turned out really pretty. And I added this butterfly from Dollar Tree into the corner and I think that just gave it an extra touch of spring and it covered up where those florals met and I think it's just perfectly beautiful. Next we have a real old DIY. This is one of my very first videos and I just went ahead and painted a popcorn tin lid that we had left over from Christmas that I had saved and used a stencil to write Hello Spring. I made this sort of into like a shabby chic type wreath. I just wrapped some nautical rope all the way around the edge and then added some Dollar Tree spring florals with some hot glue and a little bow and I think it turned out really, really cute.
moving on to the next DIY, I got this basket from a little antique shop. It was really, really cheap. I think she might have given it to me for free, actually. They were, like, closing down the shop, and so they were trying to get rid of a ton of stuff. I thought it was really cute, so I just decided to add some white paint to it, kind of whitewash it. I think I went a little overboard with the whitewashing and gave it more coverage than I wanted to so I went ahead and distressed it a little bit as well with some truffle chalk paint and then also went a little overboard with that and so I went back and just sanded it a little bit and with the final look I think it looked really good I just added in some jars that I had DIY'd they're like some Starbucks coffee jars that you just get at the grocery store um, I used to drink those a lot and so I just painted those distressed them threw some lambs ear in there and I think it turned out real cute next DIY was a previous project I had done that I really didn't like how it turned out so I went ahead and tried to remove everything that I could on the old project and then I just made that part the back I'm sure I could just cover it with some felt or something later this was a little wood plaque from Michaels, I believe, like a really long time ago. They're very inexpensive. You can get real wood ones there for super cheap. But I just went ahead and used some white Waverly chalk paint to cover the whole entire inside of the thing and the sides. Next I just have this stencil that I made from Dollar Tree contact paper. I don't use the Dollar Tree contact paper anymore just because uh, it sometimes leaves a sticky residue on my project. So I use Walmart's duck brand and I haven't had a problem with it yet. So I would suggest doing that but I will try to leave the SVG file for this little cutout if you want to use it in the description um just a real cute little hello spring with the flower for the eye i think that's really cute and <laughs> i just went ahead and stippled on some black waverly chalk paint or it's the color ink actually and then i just went around the edges too to kind of give it some more interest and distressed it a little bit with some truffle chalk paint I take that back. I distressed it a lot. I distress everything a lot. So if you don't like distressing, this might not be the channel for you. But you can still take ideas and just leave off the distressing. But I will tell you that I will probably distress every single thing that I ever make. But I really, really like how this one turned out. It was super simple to make, but super, super fun. If you don't have a Cricut, that's no problem. Obviously, you've seen how I use just regular stencils to make signs it's super easy you just need a little bit of practice um, and it comes out just great now for this next thing I'm making is just a tiny little riser and I just had these scrap pieces of wood but you could use paint stirring sticks or anything like that rulers from Dollar Tree I just went ahead and used some white Waverly chalk paint and slapped that on there kind of haphazardly didn't really care if I got full coverage because I wanted it to look super rustic and then I just went ahead and glued it together to make a little riser for my Dollar Tree pots that I had previously um, just whitewashed and added some Dollar Tree succulents to and I think it came out really cute just adds a little extra height and interest to those little pots instead of just setting the pots down on a shelf or windowsill by themselves.
Next, I have another one of these plastic frames with the glass in it. And like I said, I did use some uh, nail polish remover to get the words off. It was a little bit difficult to get them all off. So I would say if you have like 100% acetone, that would work a lot better, but I didn't. So I just used what I had. Then I just added a Cricut vinyl decal and I will leave that linked in the description as well. I just hot glued a little bit of lavender onto the back so it would show through underneath. And then I decided that I didn't like the black frame and I wanted to make it white. So I went ahead and did that and then just a little bit of distressing with my truffle Waverly chalk paint. And that's all I did for this one. I think it turned out really, really pretty. And I think it would go perfect with the next two DIYs that I'm gonna show you. So this next one is so, so simple. I just have one of these little frame type things from Dollar Tree. It's not a regular frame because you do have to pop the plastic part out of the middle, but it's super easy to do. You might want to reinforce the frame with some glue or extra staples because it does kind of, um, it is a little bit flimsy, but it's not plastic. It is the... Uh, chipboard type stuff so I really like the way that you can paint on it and it looks more like real wood and I just added a couple pieces of twine with some hot glue and just tied on some lavender from Walmart with some little bows and that's all I did for this one so super cute but it looks like um you know just how they used to hang florals and stuff like that to dry and herbs and whatnot and so I don't know, that's kind of the idea that I was going for here. It's not the best picture. The lighting was really bad for that one, but I think that DIY did turn out really cute. So moving on to the third lavender DIY that I have. This one is literally so simple, but I think it's one of the prettiest ones. I just took some brown craft paper from Dollar Tree and just kind of tied it around the lavender with some twine, and that's all I did. I think it looks so pretty. I think those three would make the prettiest little vignette. Next DIY is another favorite. I just have these wee yogurt jars that Zach's mom saves for me sometimes. And I went ahead and just painted them and distressed them, added a little twine at the top and some Dollar Tree succulents. And I had done this previously. Mm, I used some of these in our wedding and that's why I had them on hand. She saved a bunch for me, but I decided to make some little macrame like hanging jars and I've never done macrame before so I just looked it up a little tutorial and it was super simple so I'm not going to try to explain it because that would just be too difficult. Just if you want to see how I did it, just keep watching because um, it's pretty difficult to explain, um, but it's super easy to see what I'm doing here in the video.
beautiful did these turn out. I absolutely love these. I posted them on Facebook Marketplace and they sold immediately. They are so, so cute, but so simple to make and so cheap. Ugh, I just love how they turned out. So for this next DIY, I had a piece of wood that I used for a different sign that I didn't like anymore. So I just flipped it over and covered the entire back with some ivory Waverly chalk paint. Next, I have this uh, SVG file that I created on Cricut, and I will leave it linked below. Um, but I just went ahead and used some Dollar Tree contact paper as a stencil. I don't suggest using Dollar Tree contact paper. It leaves like a sticky residue on your project. M maybe not for everyone, but for me it does often. So I switched over to Walmart Duck brand contact paper. Works so much better, so inexpensive. There's a ton on the roll, so I just highly suggest using that instead. And um, I just go ahead and use the washi tape setting to cut it out and it works perfectly. Every time you just reverse weed, so take out the part that you want to have on your sign and then paint over it. Uh, so I will leave this SVG file linked below and that way you can use it if you have a Cricut as well. I don't know how to make printables yet. Maybe one day I will get around to learning that for you guys. I apologize if you don't have a Cricut. Um, but anyway, I just used the color ink for this stencil and I think it turned out really, really pretty. And then I wanted to just add a little detail to the edges because it just looked too open for me. So I just used some pieces of wood to make a straight line and went along it with my Posca paint pen. And that's pretty much all I did for this one and I absolutely love how it turned out. It's still one of my favorites. So pretty. The only downside is that sticky residue so it collects all the dust and nasty stuff. I tried to wipe it off but I was not successful. So moving on to the next DIY, I have these Dollar Tree eggs. If you have been watching me for any length of time, you've probably seen me do this many times with lots of different projects, but I just have some old music paper from an old music book that I found at the thrift shop. It's very thin paper, so it's perfect for this. You could use anything that you like, cut up book pages or torn. I like to tear it. I just think it looks really cool or you could use napkins, any kind of like paper mache type stuff. I just use Mod Podge to adhere it. I know there's other stuff that you can use, but I'm not very familiar with it. So anyway, I had this bowl on hand that I found in the closet um, that was Zach's. Anyway, when I first did this video, Zach's mom texted me like, I recognize that bowl. I Apparently, she sent some food home in it, and I didn't know, and Zach didn't remember, and he was like, sure, paint it. But luckily, she didn't mind at all. <laughs> I just thought that was a funny side note. But anyway, I just painted this whole entire bowl with the ivory chalk paint. I really like the details on it, so um, that's why I picked this one. And then I just decorated my eggs a little bit with some lace and twine and different bows and things like that. Just any scrap pieces that I could find to fancy them up a little bit. go ahead and distress my bowl which really brought out some of those pretty details and I wanted this to be kind of like a nest so I just added in um, some moss and my eggs and a few little uh, florals that I had on hand from Hobby Lobby and I think it just turned out so cute and pretty and shabby chic and everything that I love for spring.
to the next DIY. I had this butterfly that was part of a sign from Dollar Tree. I went ahead and covered the whole entire thing with some ivory chalk paint. It didn't completely cover all of those uh, bright colors, but that was no big deal to me since I was going to cover the entire thing with some more of that music paper. I just used some glue stick to adhere it since I just cut out the big pieces instead of tearing it and using the Mod Podge. Then I had some scraps of this music fabric. You can use anything that you have on hand is kind of the key for shabby chic, vintage type uh, projects. And that's what I do is I just look around for what kind of scraps I have on hand. Everyone keeps asking me what this heart ribbon is called from Hobby Lobby because they can't find it. I have no idea what it is called. I apologize. I don't have the roll anymore because I just had a few scraps left over. Um, but next time I go to Hobby Lobby, I'll see if they have the ribbon so that I can find it and tell you guys exactly what it's called so that you can look for it online because I know it's hard to find the same items online that you find in store sometimes. But anyway, I just had different like paper flowers and stuff from Hobby Lobby's Paper Studio um, and their Paper Studio stuff goes on sale every other week. So I would just, if you don't know, you can look online or call ahead of time and see is this week the week that it's on sale? I would suggest doing that before you go because it can get kind of expensive if their stuff is not on sale. But anyway, just added a bunch of random things. Most of this scrap stuff is from Hobby Lobby. Um, but like I said, it's very cheap if you do it when it's on sale. That's all I did to this little guy and I think it's just so pretty and so perfect for spring. I lied, that's not all I did. I also have this flower ribbon from Hobby Lobby um, and I just cut off the flowers and then cut off that excess ribbon type stuff around it so that I can use the flat, just the flower and same with these little ones and oh, they really add like a romantic touch to any shabby chic project and I just love it. to the next DIYs. These were some little jars that I found at Dollar Tree and I just went ahead and covered the whole entire thing with some white Waverly chalk paint and they had all these little nooks and crannies. It makes it a little bit more difficult to paint but it makes it that much more beautiful when you distress it because it brings out all those beautiful details so I just used some truffle chalk paint to distress these and added a little bit of twine and some bows and whatnot and then I just threw in some Dollar Tree succulents with some reindeer moss and I really really like these you can do just one or three like I did. Um, I like having three in a row I think it's really pretty like that maybe like on a windowsill or something I want to put everything on a windowsill and I have like no windowsills to put things on. DIY I have this silver platter from Dollar Tree and covered it with some more of that ivory chalk paint and I did a couple coats on here just to make sure that I had that full coverage. It is that shiny plastic so the more coats you do sometimes it takes off the previous coat. If you're having an issue with that I just try to go lightly but also um, you could use spray paint or something instead if you want to. They do have chalky finish spray paints as well. Next I just have this cutout that I did with my Cricut. It's just a leaf and I just put that right into the center of the plate. And this, I feel like this is kind of vintage, Victorian, uh, shabby chic, 
I don't know what you would call this, botanical? I don't know. Anyway, I really like how it turned out, but you could use a free printable or something like that and Mod Podge it on. You don't have to have a Cricut or anything. So I just went ahead and used the color Spanish Moss. It is a folk art chalk paint, but there's very similar colors in the Waverly. This is just what I had on hand. And so I just stippled that onto my project and then I did distress it with my, um, what is that called? I did distress it with my truffle chalk paint as well to bring out those beautiful details. And this simple, simple project is probably one of my favorites still. And I actually sold this one right away on Facebook Marketplace as well. I would not suggest removing your sticky stencil while your paint is still wet. I think the only reason that I did that for this one was because I was trying to remove it before that residue adhered to my plate. Um, but like I said, I have never had a problem with Walmart contact paper doing that at all. So just make sure you're using the right stuff so that you don't have a problem on your project because it's the worst thing to spend so much time and energy on one project and then it's just ruined at the end. It's very, very disappointing. Take it from me. Moving on to the next project, I don't remember exactly where I got this bottle, but you can find similar ones very easily, even wine jugs and things like that. Um, but this one's a little bit smaller than those regular wine jugs, but either way it would be super cute. I just went ahead and painted the whole entire thing with some white Waverly chalk paint. I give it two coats to make sure it's pretty opaque. <laughs> And then I just went and got an old jug that I had done previously and kind of copied the words onto it. I like to use the number four because there's four people in our family, so it actually at least kind of means something to us. Um, but it's also that nice farmhouse look. I went ahead and used a pencil first so that I could erase any mistakes that I made since I was freehanding it. And then once I got it the way I liked it, I just went over top of it with a Posca paint pen and... It covered up the pencil very easily.
completely finished with putting on my letters, I did go ahead and add some distressing with some truffle chalk paint and then I like to go back over it with some sandpaper as well and kind of tone those harsh colors down and make it look a little more natural and that's all I did for this one. I absolutely love how it turned out. Next little jar, I got this from my sister-in-law that actually had hot chocolate in it for Christmas, but I thought it was the cutest little shape, so I saved it and I went ahead and just covered the whole entire thing again with that white Waverly chalk paint, and then I just have a little Cricut stencil that I made. I will also leave this one linked in the description. If you're wondering exactly how I do it, you I will also leave my video link to how I make my Cricut stencils using Dollar Tree contact paper. Like I said, just use Walmart instead. But in that video, I do use the Dollar Tree one, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I will leave it linked below. It's a very old video, so I'll try to make a new one soon because I've learned a lot more since then. But anyway, yes, I will try to leak link all of the SVGs that I use in this video so you guys can use them too if you have a Cricut. Then I basically did the same exact process as the last jar and I think it came out really really pretty. to the last jar that I'm doing. This is a Starbucks coffee jar that you just get at the regular grocery store. I just removed the label and then did the exact same process on it. No words on this one just this time, but I did add a little bit of twine to the top. It just adds a little something, makes it a little extra rustic, and I like doing that with these jars. I have tons of them because I was saving them for our wedding, but then we had to have a little wedding because of COVID, but um, I still had a ton of these jars, so I wanted to go ahead and use them. Now, I guess I lied. This is the last bottle here, um, but this is just a little Coke bottle, and I just went ahead and wrapped the whole entire thing with twine and that's all I did for this one. You don't need hot glue on the whole entire thing. I would just say when you're starting it, use as much as you need to make a stay at the top and then when you're ending it, you can use some more, but I really didn't need much at all going all the way down the bottle. Um, I like to pair this with the jars that I just did. It just adds a little bit more texture and mixes it up. and. I think it's really, really pretty. You could go ahead and burn the outside too to get all of those strings off and give it a little bit more of an extra rustic look. Or if you don't like fire, you can go ahead and just uh, distress it with some paint and that would work too, like some brown paint. Kind of gives it the same look. It just doesn't remove all of those little hairs, unfortunately. And this one I didn't do that, um, but those are some options for you. For this DIY, I actually did this one a really long time ago. I had this piece of wood. I think it's more like chipboard actually, but it was just an old picture from a thrift shop and I used the lid of the tin and then just some pieces of wood to make the shape of a sun and I just kept trying to do it until I liked the way that it looked um, since I was kind of freehanding it, but I did use those pieces just to make my lines a little bit more straight and the sun a little more round because I'm not very good at freehanding those types of things. Anyway, after that, I just used a yellow Posca paint pen for to kind of outline the rays of sun. 
Now the paint that I'm going to use to fill in the sun rays is like a gold type paint and it's okay it doesn't have to match perfectly but the closer the better that way when you're using your paint that you're filling it in with you can kind of cover up the other color. Now this is like a metallic gold color that I had on hand that I had been wanting to use up so I thought why not use it for this. I had to do about 59 coats of paint on the sun rays to get them opaque. just a ton of different yellow flowers on hand and I just cut them all off of their stems and hot glued them into the middle part for the sun and I really love how this looks um, it's not totally my style it's not as rustic as I would like but you could make it more rustic you could do like a lighter yellow and distress it like on a white background I feel like I maybe want to redo this again but I made this a really long time ago and I feel like my style has evolved a little bit since then uh, but I still really love how this one turned out so I wanted to add it in Next I just use a stencil from Michaels and some bigger stencils. Next I just use this stencil from Michaels that I got uh, several years ago so I'm not sure if they still have it and then also some big stencils from Walmart to write you are my sunshine. I thought it would be cute to go on Bree's wall but it really doesn't match her room colors and so that's the reason that I didn't use it because I made it for her a long time ago now that she actually has a room. Like, it just doesn't go, and she has way too many things to be able to put everything on her wall that I want to. And so, anyway, I think I just um, colored over this one, and I'm using it to make a new sign. But I still do think it came out really pretty, and if it matched your decor, I think it would be super cute in someone else's home. I just outlined this with my Posca paint pens, and then covered the whole inside with a small brush with my apple barrel paint and like I said it did come out pretty it's just not completely my style anymore I'm starting out with this foam wreath from Dollar Tree wreath form and then I actually had these purple flowers from a garland that came in a Michael's grab bag so it was like almost zero dollars because I got so many things in there um, but I just started taking it apart and I got this probably a year or two ago I never knew what to do with it um, but I just pulled all the pieces off there's three flowers on each little piece and I just hot glued them all the way around it took a while because I had to hold them down for quite a while since my glue is so hot maybe if you had a low temp glue gun it would be faster I would think because I had to wait for it to dry and also it was melting a little bit as I did it so I would suggest a low temp if you have one but I just filled up the whole entire thing with flowers until it was as full as I liked it and that's all I did for this one super simple and easy and I think it turned out so pretty So for this next DIY, I actually have this basket that 
Uh, it was given to me by my grandma with a little teddy bear in it when I was a little girl, so I've had this forever. Um, and I'm not gluing anything or anything like that so that I don't mess it up in case I want to put the teddy back in it later. But right now, Brie loves that teddy and she sleeps with it and everything. So the basket was just sitting there and I decided to make some good use of it. So I just threw some Dollar Tree moss in here. But I think you can get baskets similar to this at Dollar Tree at Easter time. So you could just spray paint it white and distress it if you want to or whatever color you like. Um, and then, like I said, I just threw in some Dollar Tree moss, and then I had this little uh, bird's nest from Hobby Lobby from like a really long time ago. It came with a bird in it and everything, but I just took that out, and I decided to add a little bit of white Waverly chalk paint, just a little dry brushing to make it, you know, a little more just farmhouse shabby chic looking, and um I really like the look that it gave it. I picked up these little eggs from Dollar Tree and I just tried to pick out the ones that I thought were kind of the lightest in color that would be the easiest to cover with paint. They are covered in glitter. It will go everywhere. <laughs> um, but once you put the paint on, of course it's not going anywhere. I just went ahead and painted right over the glitter. I really like the texture that it leaves on the eggs. Super easy to pull the little ribbons out and I had this piece of like wire from some old florals that I took the flowers off of and I actually used that to stick my eggs onto to paint them more easily. You could use anything like a, ske a skewer or whatever and I've done it in my hand too. It's really messy but you can wash your hands. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, these only needed one coat of paint since I tried to pick the lighter colors. It covered them just fine. And then I did go ahead and distress them a little bit with some brown chalk paint. Now I have been using the same spring florals from Hobby Lobby from this pick for years now. I just take a few here and there and it comes with so many on there. Their florals are half price a lot of the time so I just go when they're on sale and grab them up. So on to the next DIY. This is probably my favorite from this video, but this is a Dollar Tree DIY. And I just found these little treat bags for Easter at Dollar Tree. And I just am using one for this project, but it comes with several in the bag. I'm just using some stamps that I have from Hobby Lobby. I've had these for years and I also have this Distress ink. And you can use any ink that you have on hand. This is just what I have. and. I just went ahead and wrote bunny bait on my little tag. This little tag also came from Dollar Tree in a little pack. It's in the scrapbooking area and it comes with a ton. And I love these little tags. I think they're so cute um, for shabby chic and farmhouse projects. But I just wrote bunny bait on there. And I also used my ink to distress my little bag. You can definitely do tea or coffee staining if you want to and the bag is really cute and rustic already so you don't even have to do that if you don't want to but I kind of like that grungy uh, primitive country look. I don't know what it's called. You guys know but anyway um, yeah so I just went ahead and distressed it quite a bit and then I did have a carrot left over from Dollar Tree from a few years ago that I just poked in the top because I thought that was so cute for a bunny bait. Um, someone did ask me the other day where I got the carrots from because they haven't seen them in years at their Dollar Tree they said and I haven't seen them yet this year but I've only been like one time in the whole year so far so um, I wouldn't be able to tell you if they have them out this year or not, but I did get mine a few years ago and I'm just kind of reusing them for different projects. So I would not be able to tell you, unfortunately. So once I had him as distressed as I liked, I went ahead and took some old stuffing from an old pillow. You can see I'm getting to the end of this one. It was so old and it was really smashed and like matted down. So I just always fluff it up before I use it in my project. And once I had the amount that I liked, I just tied it up with the little uh, jute string that it came with and added that tag to the side pop my little carrot in there and that's all I did for this one and I think he turned out so so adorable.
So these next two DIYs are super simple. I had these old pieces of scrap wood on hand and I just decided to paint them with some white Waverly chalk paint. It took two coats and then I did go ahead and take them outside and use my electric sander on them to distress them a little bit. You could use regular sandpaper no problem. I'm just running out of the regular and since I have the electric one on hand, it's super easy and quick for me to be able to do that. So that's what I did with these. And then I actually found the little transfers in the Target dollar spot or Bullseye Playground, whatever you call it. And I just thought they were so, so cute for spring. It came with two projects in the pack for $3, which is not a bad price for two projects. I'm just using my transfer tape that I get at Walmart. It's not actually transfer tape. It's just the Duck brand of... Um, contact paper and I just use the clear one. I love this more than Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree often leaves a sticky residue on my project so I go with Walmart. It's a huge huge roll for like five dollars and lasts me forever and is way more cost effective and but much better quality than Dollar Tree in my opinion. So that's what I use to transfer it. It says in the directions that you can just peel and stick, um, but since I had this on hand, I went ahead and used this because I thought it would make it easier for me than trying to position every piece the way I wanted it. So these were super, super simple projects. So easy to do, um, but turned out really, really pretty in my opinion, and I absolutely love this color too. I think it's gorgeous for spring and yeah, just so, so easy. I just use an old card. I don't even have one of those little scrapers. Don't worry, this is just an old gift card. Um, someone told me you should not be showing your card numbers on the screen, <laughs> but don't worry, it's just an old gift card. Um, but that's what I use to put down all of my Cricut transfers to. <laughs> you don't really need anything fancy. For this next DIY, I have this wreath form from Dollar Tree, and it actually has this twine wrapped all the way around it, which is really convenient for putting the flowers on. I wanted this to look super whimsical and like spring and wild and just all of that, nothing like symmetrical or perfect. Um, so I just used some of these florals that I have from Michaels. I got these last year, but I really love how it looks kind of scraggly. <laughs> um, but I think it's so pretty and I think it goes perfectly with the chicken wire in the frame. You could definitely hot glue this. I would suggest it if you're going to leave it the way it is. This one came out so, so pretty. And like I said, I just love those Michaels florals. They always have beautiful, beautiful spring florals. I just got some in my last haul with Brie, and they're just so wild looking, and that's just so beautiful to me. Let me know if this is your style too, or if you are more of like the farmhouse chic or modern farmhouse look. But anyway, on to the next one. I have this more of a shabby chic one that I did, and I kind of wish that I distressed it a little bit more, and you guys might be thinking, like, what? But I just love distressing. If you have been around my channel for any length of time, you know that. But anyway, I just took this um, ornament shape sign that I got from Dollar Tree 
a while back and I had used it to make a Christmas sign and I just wanted to repurpose it because I wasn't using it in my home anymore and so I went ahead and ripped everything off and cut off that top piece. It's very easy to just kind of score it with a razor blade or exacto knife and then just break it off as you saw that I did there and then you can just cut off the excess very easily with some scissors. And then I just had this piece of scrapbook paper on hand, just picked a fun spring one that I liked. I'm not sure where I got this paper. I think it might have been from an online shop, so I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll try to find it and link it. Now, using one of these dangly heart signs that I got from Dollar Tree for Valentine's Day, um, I just went ahead and pulled off one of those hearts and painted the back with this pumpkin color. I actually mixed in some white first because I wanted it to be a lot lighter and kind of match the florals on my scrapbook paper. So I went ahead and mixed in some white. Once I had painted that completely, I wasn't very happy with the color once it dried. Um, it was a little darker than I liked, and so I thought I would add a little bit more white. I tried to do um, kind of like some stripey type detail, and I wasn't liking that, so I just decided to blend it all in. And I absolutely loved the effect that it gave it. It was almost like kind of streaky looking you'll see um, but I really like it because it looks kind of um, I don't know distressed and shabby chic and old and vintage and all of that good stuff that I like here on my channel and so I think that it turned out really pretty with the paint So I just hot glued that heart down to my circle. I made sure to only put the hot glue where it was going to be touching the circle because I was going to leave this overlapping just a little bit. And you can see this is where I covered up that spot that wasn't exactly perfectly round. Um, and then I had these flowers. They're from a ribbon that I get at Hobby Lobby. And again, you can get those half off. This is a beautiful ribbon and I just cut the flowers apart off of it and hot glued them down. You could add a little distressing to these with that distress ink if you want to. And I do that a lot of times. I just didn't think of it this day. And looking back, I'm like, oh, I wish I did that. But that's okay. I think it still came out really pretty. And then next, I just went ahead and used some more of my stamps that I have from Hobby Lobby and that distress ink. And I wrote spring on the heart. I definitely did not try to make it perfect. I just wanted it to be kind of more playful and like somebody just kind of slapped it on, like not a professional or anything like that. And so I did not try to make it in a perfectly straight line or anything. I think that's kind of key for the shabby chic vintage um, colonial, what is this stuff called? Mixed media. There's so many names and I never know which one my stuff is. I just like it. <laughs> For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I picked up this little mason jar type cup with the handle and just painted it with some white Waverly chalk paint, took two coats, and then I just decided to distress it a little bit. I don't know what happened to my footage, but I actually had a little 
um, paper scrapbook cutout of a flower that I wanted to Mod Podge on there and that's what I did and that footage just disappeared so just know that I did that it just came in a scrapbook I just decided to take some Dollar Tree jute twine and tie it around the top and then just wrapped it around a few times and tied it again I like to do that as often as I can so I don't waste my hot glue um, because I go through a lot of hot glue and <laughs> any time that I can save myself a penny I will do so so I just went ahead and tied it on there no need for hot glue in this situation <laughs> and then I took some Dollar Tree florals and put them in the jar um, at least that's what I did here in the video and then once I went to stage it I changed it out for some Michaels ones I think both look really pretty but I think that the Michaels florals just kind of get take it to another level and it just looks so beautiful and shabby chic and you guys know that I love that so let me know if you like this style as well and I will keep doing it. For this next Dollar Tree project, I have this from Dollar Tree. I actually made a different DIY with it last summer maybe and it said home with a little starfish and I just took that off and went ahead and painted over the whole thing only this time I'm using the inside I'm just using some white Waverly chalk paint and I just did two coats to cover the whole entire thing but again just using some of those Michaels florals that I had on hand and then I actually had a beautiful pink rose from Hobby Lobby and they are starting to make these beautiful florals that feel like real flowers I don't know how like I don't know how that's a thing, but they really look and feel like real ones, like on the top of the petals. The bottom you can tell is not, but the top, it feels and looks like a real flower, and I don't know how it's possible. Like, it's so soft and velvety, not velvety, I don't know. Anyway, I had this on hand because I used it to make a flower wand for Brie for our wedding but then I did go ahead and do something else that matched our colors a little bit better and so I just decided to use this in here and I think it turned out so so pretty it's like not a sign there's nothing anything to it except for the flowers in the box and I just think that I don't know simple but really pretty and I just like how it turned out and I will stop rambling now. So on to the final DIY. This little wreath I found in um, my grandparents house when we were going through their things before selling the house and um, I took quite a few things that were like just craft supplies that they had on hand or different decor. They had some really awesome stuff, but this little guy was just falling apart and he was very cheaply made and he was just completely, he was done for. So I decided to take him off and revamp this little wreath. I did go ahead and save that blessings sign at the top. It's a little wooden piece and I thought I could probably use that in another DIY later, but it's just on there with a little bit of wire and so it was really easy to take off. There was some hot glue on the front of the wreath, so I just flipped it over and used the back. But anyway, once I had everything taken off of this wreath, I used some old florals that I had from Michaels and Hobby Lobby. So I just pulled those right off of there and hot glued them down and added a little bit of greenery. I have some lambs here from Walmart. Those are just two dollars, I think per bunch and comes with quite a bit on there and I just pulled a few pieces off and used that and then also a few random stragglers from uh, Michaels that was also part of my wedding florals absolutely love the colors just feels fresh and bright and I'm really enjoying that right now
Next, I have this sign I found at Goodwill, and it was originally from Kirkland's, and then I found out that, um, or one of you told me that sometimes the bigger stores like Kirkland's will donate brand new items to Goodwill, and then they resell them, so that's probably why it was there brand new. Anyway, in either case, I absolutely love the scallop detailing on this and I knew that I wanted to use it for my shelves or in my bathroom and I might change it up. But like I said, the W means nothing to me. So I did go ahead and paint over it with some white Waverly chalk paint. And uh, I did two coats on here and then I decided I wanted to distress it a little bit just so it looked a little bit more cohesive with the seat or with the frame but then when I did it I didn't like how it looked so I went ahead and let Brie just paint on it a little bit because she really wanted to help me paint which was so cute I love her cute little hands anyway she always wants to help mommy so I let her go ahead and just paint on there because I really wasn't liking how it was coming out anyway so once she was all done and the paint had dried I went ahead and went over it one more time um, with the white Waverly chalk paint I did let a little bit of that gray show through I think it was just a little too thick on there for me and so once I got it the way that I liked I went ahead and made a stencil with my Cricut with some contact paper from Walmart it's super simple you just do reverse weeding so you take out the pieces that you want to paint instead of the ones that you want to leave if that makes sense and so I just weeded that out it it was a little uh, bubbled as you can see I didn't get the piece completely smoothed out and so that was my fault and it was really hard to weed the last flower and so I messed up and I lost some pieces and I was getting super frustrated so I just decided to leave that flower off and wasn't even worried about it so once I got the part weeded that I needed that rhymed um, then I went ahead and just transferred this onto my project with some clear contact paper from Walmart and um, then I just painted over it with some ink Waverly chalk paint. I kind of wish that I used some gray instead. Uh, I think that might have looked a little better with the frame but I still think it came out cute and then I just distressed it a little bit with um, some white Waverly chalk paint like I just went over the flowers a little bit so they wouldn't be such a huge contrast but as you can see this is some really small delicate pieces and I was struggling so hard so I just showed a little bit of it and then I just skipped to the end for you guys so you don't have to watch me in pain <laughs> but I know there is a video on my channel showing you guys how I make these contact paper stencils but that was using Dollar Tree contact paper and I don't use the Dollar Tree contact paper anymore for my stencils just because it tends to leave a sticky residue on my projects and I don't like that so I do use the Walmart contact paper it works so much better in my opinion and is super affordable it's like five dollars for a huge roll that lasts me forever so I would definitely do that if you're gonna go this route with the contact paper stencil Walmart is your best bet in my opinion now I'm just using an old gift card to smooth this out so that I make sure I don't have any bubbles when I have the final uh, picture on there and then you can see how the last uh, flower was a little bit messed up and so I just went ahead and didn't even paint that one you guys ask me sometimes some tips for stenciling whether you're using a contact paper sticky stencil like this one or just a regular stencil I would suggest taping it down and you can go over top I have these flat foam brushes from Walmart and I just stipple the paint on which just means that you bounce the brush up and down instead of 
uh, swiping side to side, if that makes sense, so that it doesn't leak underneath your stencil and bleed through. And then also, another way to do it, if you don't want to get your stencil all messy, if it's not a disposable one like this one, you can go ahead and just trace an outline with a paint marker and then paint inside the lines or just color inside the lines with your paint marker. That's a super easy way to do it. That's how I used to do it all the time before I got my Cricut. Then I just went ahead and weeded everything back out. I think the picture is very pretty, but as you can see, it's just a little bit too much of a contrast for me. So I did go ahead and go back over with some white chalk paint, like I said, and just kind of whitewashed it a little bit. And I think that made it a lot prettier, but also, like I said, I kind of wish I did light gray. I may end up painting over this and doing that later, but this was just a quick project that I wanted to show you guys kind of some options for um, styling the shelves. So for this third DIY, this was from Dollar Tree, and I did have the footage of me painting it white, and I don't know, I guess I deleted that with the other part, but anyway, um, it's just one of those jars from Dollar Tree. It comes with a lid, but I just went ahead and took that off. I gave it two coats, or just one actually, of the white Waverly chalk paint, and then I dry brushed some gray paint onto it. And I had this tassel that I had made a long time ago that came off of one of my other projects. And I just went ahead and tied that on there. And then we have these little wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. I tied that on as well and added a bead. At first I thought I was going to add three, but I didn't like how that looked with the tassel. If you were doing it just with the little cutout, I think that would be so pretty with like a few different beads. And hanging off of there but since I added the tassel as well is just too much so I went ahead and took those two back off and just left one bead and these beads are from Amazon I got them a while back to do some DIYs for my wedding but Amazon is a really good deal if you're looking for a lot of beads this Dollar Tree sign and this was actually from last year but I'm sure they probably have it again I just don't go to Dollar Tree very often anymore because I have so many supplies but anyway I am just taking a light colored piece of paper so that I can see through it was still a little bit difficult to see through so if you had like some tracing paper or something that would be much easier but I just went ahead and traced around the shape of the bunny and then I'm using this as a little stencil on some fabric that I have from Walmart from a long time ago. This little piece of wood was also from Walmart. You can get these little pieces if you don't have them at your Dollar Tree um, for just like 98 cents, a dollar something at Walmart. They have the little uh, bare wood signs as well or like plaques and things that you can use. Um, but this one I had used previously and I didn't need it anymore so I just went ahead and painted over it with my ink Waverly chalk paint and then 
um, using some fabric that I have from Walmart. This was just a dollar something per yard, so super, super cheap. Just using a little scrap. It's kind of, it's not canvas material because it's a lot thinner, but it kind of gives off that vibe, which I really like. So I just used my little bunny stencil that I made and cut this out. Next, I took some, uh, what is it called? distress ink and I use that um, just to kind of distress the fabric a little bit I just rub it on top you could also coffee or tea stain this but this is so much easier and quicker for me so that's what I like to do and then I went ahead and used some white Waverly chalk paint to distress my sign as you can see I like to go along with the grain of the wood I just think it makes it look a lot more natural and so just very lightly distressed that whole piece of wood. Next, I'm just using some Mod Podge to adhere my little uh, fabric bunny to the sign. I'm sure there's some other kind of glue that you can use too, but I didn't want to do hot glue because that would leave some bumps and stuff underneath, which I really don't like. So I used the Mod Podge and I just brushed it underneath and on top, and I really like the way that it kind of smeared around the... That just sounds so gross, but I don't know what other word to use to describe it, but it kind of smeared around the distressing on the bunny and changed the color a little bit, and I really, really liked the way that it looked, and I definitely was not even doing that on purpose, but I love it even better than how it originally looked. Next, I just took that little tail that I took off of the original sign and added it to my bunny's little bum and just distressed it a little bit with some truffle Waverly chalk paint. And this is one of my favorite colors to distress with. I think it looks a little more natural than like black or something just because dirt is brown. <laughs> Anyway, I just dry brush a tiny bit of that on there. I really like how this makes it look really shabby chic and old. Anyway, I picked up these little carrots from Target Dollar Spot either last year or the year before and I just never got around to using them so I was really excited to use them in this project they had these little loops at the top I think it was maybe so you could make a little banner or something but I just went ahead and snipped those right off with my scissors these carrots are made from paper I believe they're kind of like those uh, paper streamers that you can use for parties and whatnot and they're like wrapped up tight I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, just put a little bit of jute twine at the top of my sign, and I decided to distress my carrots a little bit too. They looked so bright compared to my little sign, and it just didn't look right. They're actually even brighter than they look on camera. Anyway, I just added a little bit more distressing to the carrots, and then I glued them down to my little... Uh, jute banner string thingy and added a little bit of hot glue to the string in the middle so that it would kind of hold it down in more of a circular shape instead of just straight across so that it would look more like a little banner then just hot glued my carrots right onto my sign and I think this one came out so adorable. I love it so much. I had no idea where I was going with this one originally, but I just absolutely love how it came to be. Next, I'm making this cute little Dollar Tree wreath, and I actually found this little wreath form 
at Dollar Tree, obviously, because that's what I just said. But it looked like something that you maybe find at like the Target dollar spot or something. I thought it was really well made. At least the one that I found, some of them looked like they had a few mistakes, but I just picked through them and found the nicest one. And then this part took quite a bit of time, but I just decided to wrap the entire outer rim with some jute twine. I was actually originally going to spray paint this white um, and then wrap the twine, but I completely forgot and I was glad that I didn't because I really like how it turned out in the end. So like I said, this took quite a long time. It was about 59 years and so I would suggest if you don't want to just stand there and like get really sore feet like me you could you know sit down and watch a movie or something and do this as you go I didn't need any hot glue um, except at the very beginning and the very end I didn't need any hot glue throughout the whole entire thing I just wrapped it as tight as I could and my hand was cramping up so take a little break in between if you need to <laughs> um, but I also used the twine from Walmart for this little tip. The twine from Walmart is a lot thicker than the one from Dollar Tree. I feel like if I had used the one from Dollar Tree, it would have taken like 159 years. So um, just keep that in mind. Next, I just went ahead and distressed a little bit more with that uh, Truffle Waverly chalk paint. Now this... I was trying to make it look like the metal was kind of old and rusty and so I just dabbed it on. You can see the effect here. Um, but that was definitely not good enough for me. I decided to add a little bit of black so I used the wink, wink, the <laughs> ink, Waverly chalk paint. Let's put those two words together and you can shorten it right up. Um, but I just used the ink, Waverly chalk paint next. I also um distressed my jute twine just went over that with the truffle color and if you do not like fire like uh, me i don't really love using fire uh, especially with little kids around so i just go ahead and distress it with the paint also maybe i'm just a little lazy um it's really no big deal um, but if you don't want to do that, you can also get sort of the same effect with the paint, only you still have the hairs. So whatever, do as you please. But that's what I did with this one. And then I had these little florals from Michaels. These were 40% off in their spring collection. And I absolutely love the spring florals from Michaels. They're so wild looking and like whimsical and... I just kind of took that apart. It was only um, maybe like, I don't remember how much it was. I thought I knew, but then I realized I was thinking of something else. So anyway, just know it was very inexpensive. It was like a dollar or two to begin with, and then it was 40% off. So I really love going there over Dollar Tree's florals. I can never find the nice ones at Dollar Tree. So just picked up all of the beautiful ones I could find at Michael's and I'm going to be using those in my spring DIYs. And the next I'm just making a little bow with some uh, scraps of burlap. This would be the burlap on the big roll from Walmart and it was just a scrap that I had on hand so I just put two pieces on top of each other and tied it together with some twine and then I'm taking a little bit of that pretty ribbon from Dollar Tree and adding that on top to I think this is called like a rag bow or something I'm really not sure but I thought it was cute and once I had it all tied together I just went ahead and distressed that ribbon a little bit with my distress ink and hot glued that right on and that's all I did for this one and I think it turned out so pretty and rustic and just beautiful in my opinion. <laughs>
Next are my wood carrots. These are actually not wood. I think they're more like chipboard or something. And funny story, my husband bought a treadmill for us and when he was setting it up, these were in the box and he was like, you don't want these, do you? And I was like, gimme, gimme. I saw carrots immediately in my future. So I grabbed these and <laughs> I'm painting them with some pumpkin Waverly chalk paint and I did go ahead and distress them a little bit, but I used two um, coarse of a sandpaper and kind of ruined one side of the carrot. So I just turned it over and used the other side um, and kind of distressed the edges a little bit with the coarse one and then went a little with a lighter, um, what is it called? Grit uh, for the just the top part and then I'm using a Posca paint pen to make those lines for a carrot. I am not a professional artist. Do not judge me on this. I tried to look at some other ideas on Pinterest and I just decided to <laughs> wing it and I just put some random lines on there and then just stressed it with my sandpaper. Next, I am again taking some more pieces off of that pick from Michaels and using that for my greenery for my carrots. I just used some hot glue and some twine to put those together, tied it in a knot and then wrapped it around and then I just cut it at the length that I wanted it and hot glued it to the carrots and then I decided to add some more bows to my carrots with that same Dollar Tree ribbon and I think these turned out so so cute. Next is my favorite DIY of the video and most of these supplies are from Dollar Tree. So with the exception of a few items from Michaels and Hobby Lobby. So I am starting out with this little arrow sign from Dollar Tree and it's funny because when I was doing a haul the other day Brie was helping me and she said mommy look it's a house and I was like oh my goodness. <laughs> 
I wouldn't have even thought of that. So, and then some of you guys told me like, oh yeah, I use those as houses all the time. And sometimes I'm like, do I have an imagination at all? Anyway, so I thought that was the cutest idea and I got some inspiration from a Pinterest pin to do a little birdhouse with this. And I had this little, um, what is this called? A bird's nest. <laughs> Um, on hand I got this from Hobby Lobby like many years ago and I used it in a DIY like just in my last video I think and I just took it right out of there because I had put it into a basket and decided to reuse it for this DIY next Oh, and I just dry brushed that a little bit with some white Waverly chalk paint. And then I'm distressing my house with the truffle chalk paint again. And I just love these colors together. I think they look so pretty when they're all distressed in like rustic farmhouse country look. And so I just went very lightly over the whole thing, focusing more on the edges and the... Uh, corners where it meets and everything like that and then just more lightly throughout the middle of the little house. I just used the lid of my paint to make the little hole for my birdhouse and I'm using a Posca paint pen to draw that on and I started to kind of try to color it in and then my ink stopped coming out so I went ahead and pushed on the tip and then way too much paint came out so I just grabbed a little brush and used the paint that came out of the pen to brush it all around on the circle and that worked out just fine. Next, I wanted to hot glue this little nest onto the house, so I just cut part of it off with my scissors and it was really, really easy to do. And I just hot glued it right onto the bottom of my house. I did have to let this sit for quite a while to completely dry because it was just falling off every time I tried to move it. Um, but once I let it dry, it was perfectly fine. I think my glue was just so hot that it was taking a while for it to dry since I used so much. And then I'm using just a little piece of a pick from uh, Michael's for the eggs and that was just $1.99 and then um, the little more of those little wildflowers just hot glued them kind of sporadically around on the little birdhouse and I wanted it to look super fun and whimsical and like no rhyme or reason to it I wanted it to be really shabby chic and just fun and I think I achieved that look with this one. <laughs> So next we have these little eggs from Dollar Tree and I just poked it onto a little um, stem that I had from some flowers that I pulled off of a pick and that way I don't get my hands all messy and I can also poke it into a piece of styrofoam to let it dry. And then once it was dry, I just distressed it a little bit with some truffle chalk paint. You could do speckles on your eggs instead and that might be a little bit more realistic, but I was not in the mood to make a huge mess. As you can see, my crafting area is a huge mess and I will get paint on everything. So also I apologize for the look of my crafting area and I promise to clean it soon. 
but this is honestly just real life and a lot of times it's all I can do to even get these crafts done for you guys to get these videos out so that you can see them on time you know at least one every week I try to do and sometimes I feel like I just have no time to clean up my space but I promise to try to get that done so it's a little bit easier to watch. <laughs> Next, I just decided to add in a little bit of Spanish moss to make it look a little more messy and kind of like natural. And so I just used a little bit of hot glue for that as well so that it would stay in there and just tucked it into all the little places that had, um, you know, that were just open and filled it up with that moss. have these little paper flowers from Hobby Lobby. I've had these for years and I just reused them and I just added a few of those in there. And then I decided I wanted to put this on um, some sort of frame. So I got this frame from Dollar Tree and the glass was broken from when we moved, but that doesn't matter because I wasn't gonna use it anyway. So I just threw that part away. And then I used the cardboard to glue these jumbo craft sticks on. These are from Walmart, but I believe you can get them at Dollar Tree as well. I'm not sure. Um, but I just went ahead and cut off all of the rounded edges and I was not worried about making this perfect at all because once you put it back in the frame, the edge is not going to show at all. And plus, I wanted it to look rustic anyway. So once I had enough to cover the whole entire thing, I just went ahead and used some Mod Podge to put these onto my cardboard. I knew I didn't want to use hot glue because that doesn't work very well on wood and they will just fall off but I could not get the lid off of my E6000 and I didn't feel like going to get something to get it off. So I just decided to use some Mod Podge because I had it right there and it worked perfectly. So once I had this whole thing covered in craft sticks, I just painted it with some white Waverly chalk paint and then distressed it a little bit with that same truffle Waverly chalk paint and then once everything was all dry, I just stuck it back into the frame. I also painted the frame with a truffle color and then distressed it with the white. That's pretty much the only colors I'm using in this video almost. And I guess I just really like those and I think it just came out so pretty. I'm so happy with the way this one turned out. I just hot glued my house right onto the frame once it was all done. And I just think it turned out so beautiful.
So to get started, I'm using this mirror from Dollar Tree. I've had this for probably years now and I kind of had a sort of a plan like this for it, but was never 100% sure what I was going to do with it. I'm using some white Waverly chalk paint to cover this entire thing. I just did one coat since I will be adding some pink on later. Now the pink that I'm using is called Vintage Victorian and it's a full art home decor chalk paint. I believe Waverly has a similar color called Ballet Slipper. They're both really pretty and I just love this color for spring. I did more of an opaque look around the outside part. I was kind of planning to just dry brush a little bit but I went a little heavy handed and I still like how it came out but I did more of a dry brush um, on the inner part of the circle. Now the colors and just kind of adding a floral is what made this more like a spring DIY for me. The lace and ribbons are from Hobby Lobby. I usually get them when they are half price. So that makes them a lot more affordable and there's a whole lot on the roll. So it's really not that expensive even compared to Dollar Tree. The strings of pearls are also from Hobby Lobby and you can find them in the ribbon section as well. Um, they do have some bigger pearls that I've seen at Dollar Tree and you could kind of do the same effect with those. But these on a string just make it so easy to add to Shabby Chic projects and I think it just really pulls everything together. I just really love the look of the pearls. Next, I'm just doing some quick and easy distressing with my Distress Ink from Hobby Lobby. I've had these for years and I'm still using it, so they really last a long time. I really like it for fabric because it's easy to just throw that on there. You could definitely coffee or tea stain these things as well, but for me, this is just a quicker option. If I had thought of it, I would have done the lace beforehand, but that's okay. And then I did just go ahead and put it all around the entire project, and I think it really adds a nice distressed effect, but so, so quick and easy. I think it turned out so pretty and it really goes together well with my Easter decor that I have been doing this season. If you want to see how I made my Easter egg garland, I will leave that video linked in the description because I think it just pulls really nicely together with these spring DIYs. So moving on to my next DIY, I got this cat frame from Dollar Tree a while back. I really like the texture on the frame, it was almost like wood. Um, obviously it's just plastic, but the texture kind of gives it a faux wood look. And so I just went over that with one coat of my white Waverly chalk paint and did sort of the same technique 
um, with the pink and I just dry brush that on top and I just did one coat of the white because I was going to dry brush the pink on top if you were just only going to use the white you probably need two coats on this now I picked up these little frame uh, things from Hobby Lobby and they're in the scrapbooking section and they're also half price every other week and so anyway I just dry brushed that a little bit with some more of the pink and hot glued it right into the middle of my frame and next I decided to add some well just one <laughs> butterfly from Dollar Tree and I really really love these little wood cutouts I don't know about you guys but butterflies just seem like spring to me and I thought this would be really cute like on a shelf in Bree's room or something. I may even add a picture of her in there or you could leave it just as it is as decor. You don't even need anything on the inside. The frame itself is pretty enough I feel like to just leave it the way it is. But I just did the same exact thing on that butterfly, used some white Waverly chalk paint and then some more of that pink on top and hot glued it right into the corner of the frame. And that was all I did for this one and I think it turned out so, so cute. Now moving on to the last DIY, this one's actually my favorite even though it's so simple. I just had this jar from Dollar Tree, painted it with one coat of the white Waverly chalk paint. These are all pretty much exactly the same. White paint and then a little pink paint. Only this one I decided to add um, some tassels and beads and make it a little more fun and some succulents from Dollar Tree. So I found this in the yarn section of Dollar Tree, but it's just called cotton cord and it's not the same exact texture as yarn. I really, really liked it and I thought it would be perfect for tassels on little shabby chic or boho projects. So I snatched it right up and I just wrapped it around a few times and then made a quick and easy tassel and tie that on there. And then I had one of those little houses from Dollar Tree on hand and I just decided to cut the little bead off of there and put it onto this project. And that's all he did. And then I just added in some of that, uh, I don't know what it's called, some sort of grass or something. Um, I think it's, is it Excelsior grass? No, is it? Let me know down in the comments. I just added a little bit of filler and then some faux succulents from Dollar Tree. I picked out the prettiest ones I thought they had. I really love the light colored ones. I think they look more realistic and a little less cheap. And I always grab those when I can. So I just stuffed three of them down in there and I think this one came out so pretty. Even though it was so simple to make. And I apologize that my camera went out of focus for a little bit. Um, I'm still learning how to use it and it's really hard to watch the camera and what I'm doing at the same time. So once in a while it does go out of focus and I don't notice. So I apologize for that. I'm also learning a new editing software again. Hopefully this one is the magic one um, that I'll stick with. But I really appreciate you guys for sticking with me through all of the craziness and I really appreciate all of my new subscribers. I know I gained a lot of subscribers since my last two videos. So thank you so much if you're new here for joining in on all the fun. I love having you guys. And I also want to mention that I just reached 18,000 subscribers. 
thank you so much. I'm so excited to hit 20,000 soon. I'm like already halfway to 19,000 um, just since my last two videos, since hitting 18,000, if that makes any sense. Anyway, what I wanted to say is when we get to 20,000 subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway. I've, I'll, I've already started collecting items for the giveaway. I have a bunch of craft supplies and just fun stuff from Dollar Tree and other places like Target Dollar Spot. So make sure that if you want to get entered into the giveaway sooner, help me get to 20,000 subscribers by liking and commenting and sharing my video and hopefully we will be there soon and i'll be able to do that giveaway thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more diys like these and i will see you guys in the next one don't forget i do have my social media link down in the description so you can go and follow me there as well as a facebook group where you can share all of your beautiful creations i love to see what you guys are making can you show us what you're gonna do yeah let's open it up Let's open it up. Yep. Okay. Brie has her little Easter painting she's going to do. Let's open it. And Olaf is watching. Yep. <laughs> Great job, little bud. With a paint on it. You're getting a little bit of paint on it? Yep. It blue on it. Blue? Uh, sorry. Oh, that's perfect, little bug. And this is a great one to make. A house. It's a great one to make? Yeah, a house. You're making a house? Yep. Oh, my goodness. A bicycle. That looks so fun. A little bit of paint on it. A little bit of paint on it? Yep. It looks so pretty. There. And a little bit of paint. This way, Mama. Sure, you can turn it that way. It's a little bit blue. A little bit of blue? Yep. Wow, that looks so good, Brie Bug. I love it. Good job. Can I get a little bit of green on it? Yep. I think it's an airplane. Is it falling? Yep. I'll fix it. Uh, this the um there that goes right here. Okay. That goes like that. Might fall over though. There you go. You really like green, don't you? Yeah, I like yellow. Yellow? Yep. Yeah. Great job. That looks so beautiful. Okay. Where's his face? Where's his face? Where's his face? Did you paint over it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little, a little bit of paint on it. Yeah. See if we can fix it. Dear. Oh, that's too far away, huh? How about that? Uh. Ugh. <laughs> Let's set it up against the easel a little bug. There you go. Now it won't fall over. I think it might be another airplane. Yep. Can you hear it? Yep. That looks
looks so good. I love it. Yeah. You're doing such a great job. Yeah. <laughs> There's her face. You found it? Yeah. It was covered up with some paint, huh? This? Oh, I think that's an old paint piece. What's that? Oh, I think Daddy's watching something while he's on the treadmill. Yep. <laughs> there we go. There you go. That looks so good. That looks so good. Purple? Yeah, we don't have purple, do we? Nope. What color is that? It's it's yellow. Good job. It's looking so pretty, Brie Bug. So many colors. So many colors. It's beautiful. You having fun? Yep. You like painting, don't you? Yep. We should get some more of these. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, the glow here. Gotta so be careful with them. So don't make a mess. No, here. Bree bag, bree bag. No, it's... it goes over here. <laughs> oh, don't fall down. Yeah, because your paints were falling over, huh? Yep. Gonna hold on to them? Yep. They, it's falling down. Yeah. But you got it now, huh? Yep. Good job. It looks so beautiful. A little bit of paint on it. Yeah, I'll do yellow. Yellow. Where's the bunny? Where's the bunny? Yeah, that's the bunny. There's a bunny. Is he under there? Yeah. Is he under all that paint? Yeah. That's funny. Where's her mouth? I don't know. I can't see it anymore. We can't see him. You put so much paint on there. Yep, I can see him. You can see him? Yep. Whoa, I'm a rock. <laughs> you almost fell? Yep. Oh my goodness. I love your painting. It looks so good. Who's watching over there? Olaf is watching mm -hmm. over there. Uh. Olaf is watching? Yep. <laughs> Ooh, pink. Yep. 